Today's sponsor is Audible.com, who has more than 180,000 audiobooks and spoken word audio products. Get a free audiobook of your choice at audibletrial.com slash CA Telecast. This month, we're recommending The Disaster Artist, My Life Inside the Room, the greatest bad movie ever made by Greg Sistero and Tom Bissell. <laughs> Greetings, travelers. My name is Nick Murphy. And my name is Satchel Drake. And welcome to another episode of the Cinephilia Anonymous Telecast. We're going to take you on an interstellar adventure through the darkest corners of your mind to unlock your hidden passion for, for cinema. cinema. Uh, I think I'm going to adopt syncing up with you for the last words. They're I like it. Say. I think it works really nicely. I like it. Uh, yeah. It adds like a nice uh, I'm good. snazziness to it. I'm going to apologize right now for all the crickets and grasshoppers in the background. I live where deer roam, and <laughs> if I close these windows, I'm going to melt into a puddle of um, chocksicles. <laughs> Whatever those chocolate pops are. <laughs> fudge yeah, 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 fudge sickles. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just going to look like a melted fudge sickle. <laughs> That's if, great, man. Yeah. yeah uh, it's been like really hot <laughs> recently. I was like, uh, it's really tough because. Um, we don't have like central air at my house. We have um, like room air conditioners. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah. So like whenever, whenever there's like some kind of like production thing that has to get done, it's always rough because like when we shoot continue, it's like all right, we gotta shut the air off, and then it gets real hot on the couch. Okay. <laughs> and like nighttime is a little easier, but sometimes when you and I record, I get like a little hot, and I'm like, "Phew, man." <laughs> All right, we're ready to wrap this up. Here we go. <laughs> Dude, I totally hear you. Uh, you know, today, for... today was weird, though, because there was, like, this random, like, just bout of rain, like, in the middle of the day. Yeah, dude. I, it, it was, like, crazy, crazy rain. Yeah. I missed nuts. a magical opportunity. So they're shooting, um, I don't remember the director's name, but there's this, some director that people know of is shooting a, uh, is shooting this film in the parking lot of of my creative agency whoa and, really and the film the film starring tom sizemore oh wow. um interesting and like they were like oh yeah we need extras so i was like well i'll do a thing and like yeah. they set everything up and then the moment like they started wrong, dude it was nice like they had they had those uh the the Movi free fly oh, systems really? yeah and they had like two reds and stuff and like i was just watching everyone set up like just from just from afar, like looking through, like oh, that's kind of cool. That's really yeah. cool, you know. It's nice to see those things and really, and um, we were all set up to go. Myself and my friend, we were supposed to like pretend we were like uh, walking home from something and uh -huh. reacting to some scene, and uh, it just started pouring the moment they were like, "All right, I think we're ready to go." Oh, so, dude, that's weak. Yeah. Um, I always love seeing like other um, other crews doing their thing because it makes me be like ah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm always I'm always in the middle. Like I, I get really excited, but I can't. And especially like my friends were there, and they know that like I'm I'm enthused by like filmmaking. So they were like, "Why don't you go up and talk with them? Talk with the gear." And then I was like, "Dude, I don't want to be that guy." Yeah, like, like every hey, set that one guy, you guys, hey. uh, you guys using a movie. That's cool, man. Yeah, nice. Things, uh, things yeah. really uh really stable. <laughs> I, I, I watch Vimeo once. I watch Vimeo once in a while, you know? Like. No, nah, dude, I feel the same way, man. So, like, um, so where I work um, at the, the radio station, we have, like, celebrities come by and stuff like that. And sometimes um, they'll come by with, like, their own film crew. Like, sometimes a lot of comedians, like, come by. Like, uh, we had Doug Benson come by one time, and he came by with, like, a film crew because he was filming for this, like, documentary he was doing and stuff. And, like... Everybody there is like, oh, you should talk to that other crew, and I'm like, no, I don't want to talk to that. I get like, I get like <laughs> territorial because I'm like, you guys are in my hood, and you guys are messing with my stuff, and then I, yeah, at the same yeah. time, I'm also like, is that a C100? It's a good yeah, camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good camera. Good camera, man. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. Oh man. It's but uh, so today on the on the telecast, we're going to be talking about perfume, the story of a murderer. 
Yeah, man. I got corrected today. I was like, oh, yeah, we're doing a podcast on perfume. And then someone was like, oh, you mean parfum? And I was like, oh, I guess that's a thing. Wait, I guess wait, just like I guess because it takes place in, I don't know if that's like the French way to pronounce it, because like it takes place in 18th century France. I'm not really sure. But oh, like, oh, maybe that's cool. how they pronounce it down there. Interesting. Yeah, like, that's a fun fact. Huh. All right. First thing, dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm the derailleur today. No, do um, it, man. I am, I am wearing oh you can't see in the feed oh um, no i can't it's fine the viewer dude can. i'm wearing this shirt that i found that i super love okay if you guys can see it in the video did anyway. you buy a perfume uh t-shirt <laughs> no 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 it's it's uh oh my gosh what's the kid's name now i have to pull it up i'm supposed to know but i didn't know from the sandlot uh the sandlot which kid is the fe- the chubby kid the chubby ginger kid oh um oh, what's the his great name? the great hambino right was that his name as well? That uh, no, his that was, no, that was no, no, like that, his, that was Babe Ruth. Yeah, that was his. That was his wrestling name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you, there you go. There right? you go. Yeah, um, yeah. I found a T-shirt. Of him. I wish you could see it. It's so dope. I was, uh, I was at work, and then I was walking to uh, Hamilton Porter. Wow. This. Right. Yeah. There you go. I was, I was walking to this uh, ramen burger place, uh-huh. dude. First of all, we have to go. It okay. is amazing. Second. I walk past and I pass by Urban Outfitters. I saw all these T-shirts out there, and I was like, you know, Urban Outfitters is crazy expensive, mm-hmm. but they have dope T-shirts. So they I do. Like went in and I was like, I'm just gonna look at the T-shirts or whatever, and I found this guy, and it made me think about uh, favorite films mm-hmm. and like how, like, what is the right metric of picking your favorite film, and do you even believe in favorite films? I don't know if I believe in them anymore because they're sort of like seasons where you're like yeah this is really dope i'm really yeah coming back into this again or like i want to go back to my childhood because i didn't know better so i loved things more uh-huh. but i don't know if that's accurate like how do you feel about like favorite films and stuff if people uh, ask you? i guess when it comes to favorite films i feel like it's a movie that you just want to like rewatch over and over again for whatever reason you just want to like re-experience it i guess um mm. yeah i mean like like star wars is always a favorite of mine but i get like favorite films right. for like different reasons like i like i'll be like oh man i really love the fountain because i love the cinematography and that's, and that's yeah it. but it wouldn't be i wouldn't be like you know what it's a great friday night i'm just gonna put the fountain on you know you know what mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. it's like i gotta be in like the right mood to like re-experience it and stuff and then there's like movies that i like dumb comedies like dumb comedies just like always just like do it for me <laughs> and I, just, I just like put it on yeah. and I'm just like ah that's pretty good <laughs> ah that's pretty good <laughs> that's that. you good old, you old comedy <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're always like like raunchy like like I don't know man I have like this soft spot for all these like Judd Apatow movies and stuff I'm just like ah it's pretty good it's pretty good I like that <laughs> <laughs> that's great dude but dude Sandlot's great man I love Sandlot yeah it, uh, it just tapped into just yeah that's funny. childhood I don't know you know, man, when I was, like, young in my career, uh, I really wanted to make um, – so precursor to this. I just got uh, Days and Confused on um, oh, the Criterion dude. Collection, right? So yeah, man. When I was, like, in high school and, like, and a budding filmmaker, like, I wanted to – I just wanted to, like, make a movie like that, like – Days and Confused or Empire Records, like, this, like, teen yeah. coming of age kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Dude, definitely. I guess because I was young and – thought that i had something to say sugar hi (laughs) dude i want i was wilding when that song came on your car when we were down in philly oh oh oh, dude that one song yeah that's um, like i was um, like who has this in their mix never met a girl like you You before before. (laughs) (laughs) i forgot how good that soundtrack is man it's it's fantastic (laughs) that was amazing it's uh it that i was expecting you you to eject that's probably a favorite that's I would say that's a favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. It's just like um, I don't know, man. When they're all um, there's a song by uh, Wax, and nah, that's not Wax. Um, no, the song is called Wax. Shit, who's the band? Fuck, it's gonna bother me. Uh, yeah, the song is called Wax, and the band is. Damn it, I cannot remember. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm thinking. All right, now I got to look up. I got to look <laughs> up it, Empire Record soundtrack. Oh, dude, I got that right here on my iTunes, bro. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see. see here. Crazy life. Crazy life. <laughs> yeah, freaking that 
solid track from Toe the Wet Sprocket. Also, yeah. you know, Toe the Wet good. Sprocket, good in my book. Yeah. I never hear about them too much, but, like, all I want, come on, that track was Yeah, solid. Toe the Wet Sprocket is really good. And then, yeah, Better um, Than Ezra on here. You know what pissed me off? You know what? It's not on here. It's not, it's not. Hold on, let me see. I have to go to, like, the IMDb. Yeah, Wax isn't in here either. It's not in my version. But iTunes is messed up because I bought the Empire Records soundtrack and it's oh. missing Liar from the Cranberries. Oh, really? That's unacceptable. Yeah. It's Sponge. That's that's the name of the band. Oh, okay. The song's called Plout. I'm thinking of a totally different band. It's like the okay. one part where they're like, it's like, when I wake up some dream I made up. I know no, what you're talking I about. I guess yeah. this is reality. Dude, such a good song, man. <laughs> like, I hear that song, and then, like, and you see in the movie, you're like, man, I want to work at a record store that sounds so awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's so good. And they don't exist anymore. I know, right? Yeah, and then I watched Days and Confused, and I'm like, man, I wanted to be a teenager in the 70s, man. That would have been great. <laughs> Um, I'll tell you when I would not want to be a teenager is in the 1770s when perfume takes place. Oh. Transition. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about Perfume, the Story of a Murderer. Uh, it came out in 2006 and was directed by Tom... I know, I had trouble too. Ty? Tykor? Tykor. Uh, sure, he directed, let's go with that He directed one. Run, Lola, Run, which was like another movie that i really liked when i was younger um and yeah dude so how did you hear about this movie because you suggested this how did you wind up hearing about this movie okay so i um so once in a while oh i remember so a few months ago i fell into this um vimeo click hole of just like super amazing cool like inspirational short films and then Mm -hmm. i found this one video called the great abyss Mm -hmm. and i found another video after it called making room and then another one called uh oh my gosh what's it called uh i think it's called breaking breaking the habit that could just be a lincoln park song breaking the cycle (laughs) that's what it was Uh, okay now we're gonna talk about (laughs) i know now i'm crawling in my skin yeah so (laughs) Well, yeah, I saw these three films, and I was blown away by the photography. I was blown away by the storytelling, mm-hmm. by all the cutting that probably went into, like, the answers from the person being interviewed, by how personal it was to my life, like, all the different struggles and stuff that were really real. It's like, there's, there's just these people being super vulnerable. And I was like, who is this person that made all of these things? Because uh, they were just they were just super impactful. And... Um, I was looking around, and it was associated with this company called The Music Bed, who, like, licenses music. Mm-hmm. Like, good music. Like, they properly curate good music yeah. uh, for filmmakers and give it to them at an affordable price and let you buy licenses that aren't, like, all messed up in red tape or whatever. I've been oh, using them. Um, yeah, you just used it in one of your short films recently. Yeah. Very and, good, um, by the way. <laughs> thanks, man. And... Um, uh, the, the, uh, somewhere, I don't even remember where, maybe it was like a blog or something, they were like, oh yeah, there's this dude who like shoots the films for the, for, for the music bed or whatever, and his name's Christian Schultz. So, for me, like, when I find something really cool, I'm like, I kind of want to know, like, what, all right, how, how are the gears turning for whatever person worked on this thing that's really interesting? And uh, I, fi- I try to find their Twitter handle so that I can do that. Um, so I found his Twitter, and... Um, I think one random day uh, he was tweeting about Tony Hawk mm-hmm. and he was like, I want to play Tony Hawk. And I was like, Oh, uh, no, nah, you can't play that without, uh, you know, turning off the gravity and putting on all those <laughs> stupid cheat codes or whatever. Right. Right. And I, I guess I think it started like a conversation and then it was sort of like, Oh, you're in New York. We're going to be out there for New York to shoot a thing. We should get food. So we ended up getting ramen and we were talking about a whole slew of things. Um, and he had mentioned oh we were talking about like favorite movies and stuff mm-hmm. and uh i think one of the movies he mentioned that either he really enjoyed or was associated with his tattoo or was just his favorite in general was perfume and i was just like writing them all down because for me like that whole conversation was just tossing out film after film after film things that i just really hadn't seen because i'm kind of really kind of getting into western cinema now and um i took that one down and checked it out and it was like whoa yeah, and then I mentioned it to you, and oh, we were dude. like, "Whoa!" And then it's, we were like, "Whoa!" together. 
<laughs> yeah, seriously, man. Like from like the first shot of the movie, I was like, "Wow, great choice, Satchel. This is amazing already." Yeah. It just starts yes, like the first. I think the first shot is um, the dark cell, right? And he just kind of like creeps into like into the light. Oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, I remember watching it, um, and like you see like a little bit of like 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 um a little bit of a light glint from his eyes and I was like oh, is he an alien like what it's so, yeah. he looks so otherworldly <laughs> yeah and then just like the nose comes in to fr- in, into the like, like spills into the light it's such a good reveal for like the kind of story and 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 such a good setup for the character yeah um so satchel tell us tell tell the viewers a little bit about the about the film if they haven't seen it yet no doubt so this film is about a man named John Baptiste who is so it takes place in 18th century France and pretty much what act one of this film is explaining is that this guy was destined to die (laughs) (laughs) like he was just destined to not have a really good life and really he didn't Um, he's born into well his mother doesn't want him alive (laughs) yeah yeah and uh, she essentially just like she she has this blue collar job and she just steps off for like a little cigarette break and then <laughs> shoots him out and then gets back to that blue collar job <laughs> and uh, people I mean, are you, like <laughs> you, you say it in like a in a very like in a very like uh, like uh, you know just shoots him out yeah. <laughs> and like yeah. and like normally like that'd be funny and it'd be an exaggeration but like that's the way it's por- how it's, it goes the down. way it's portrayed in the film is just like. It sets it up. It sets up like the world. Like there's there's a uh, there's a narrator. Uh, John Hurt is the narrator, and he sets it up. And he he says, oh, man. He says John Baptiste was born on this date, and it's a close up of his mother. She doubles over in pain. The camera pans down to reveal her pregnant belly. She she sinks under her fish market uh, table and gives birth to him. And it's 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 a succession of like rapid cuts of just like like push. Um, grabbing a knife, cutting the umbilical cord, and like pushing Jean Baptiste into a pile of fish guts, and then back up on top of the table, ready to sell fish. It was, it's very much like a <laughs> real quick, like oh, just had yeah. a baby, no big deal. The dude, and to, to go back to your the the how you mentioned how there were rapid shots, like that sensory experience was so vivid and distinct, like. Yeah. All the like guttural sound design and like quick oh cuts God. reminded me of it. Without this is bad because it was such a serious thing, right? Dude, can I be honest? Like, yeah, like knee jerk reaction, like all of that, taking all of that in because it was just so, the clarity was like so good. Mm-hmm. I was just like, because eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's like a dude vomiting in a corner, and then there's all there's blood, and there's birth, and there's everything yeah. that comes with that, right? And um, it reminded me. This is horrible. It reminded me of uh shoot. Uh who's who's the director for like Scott Pilgrim and Yeah, Edgar Wright. Like, it, Edgar like Wright. That. Yeah, it was like that Edgar Wright like getting ready for work. Like you're brushing yeah, my teeth. Like a da, rapid da, da, da. cut kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Only just like a million times darker. <laughs> yeah. It, it and I was, was like, like um, I was like, this is a pretty good convention for this actually, because yeah. I'm disgusted. <laughs> yeah, if you've ever seen um Requiem for a Dream, it's it's reminiscent of that. Yeah. 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 Um you know, it's really funny because like I saw that you know that that stuff takes place, and uh, I, I like I said to my wife like like for another reason in the movie, I was like, hey, I think you got to watch this movie. It's really interesting. And then we were watching it like today, and I like we I just put like the beginning part on. She's like, oh man, it's so gross. I was like, yeah, I know it's it's gross, but like, <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's, it's it's good. Meant, it's it's good. meant to be gross. It's yeah, crazy. yeah. I you know, like, for for so f- <laughs> the Jean Baptiste has a. Uh, um, he's a good smeller. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let me think of a smart word to describe. I, I, I have what down he can in my. Do. I have. I have. He's he's captivated by scent. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. He he's able to like dissect scents and and almost like it's almost like a spider sense of scent. It is for because him. later on in the film it gets freakishly supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so I found it interesting that, that, that the first time we're, th- that our characters revealed to us is, it's just basically just like a, a, the only thing illuminated is his nose. It kind of sets up what, what he is. 
And then um, I found it interesting that they that the narrator talks about that. Um, I wish I wrote down the quote, but it, it's basically talking about how like his existence may have been like wiped from history or something along these lines. His existence may have been wiped uh, from history, much like the thing that made that made him. Like, there's no way to record sense, and that's what like the whole movie is all about, basically. Right. And right. I just found it really interesting that like it's an entire movie dedicated. <laughs> it's a visual medium. Right, right. A, right. A thing Conveying you, you the see. one thing that films can't really convey. Right, exactly. Like you can see it, you can hear it, and I think um, the 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 visual sense and and the like the, even like the set design I think really sets you up for um, to kind of put you in that mindset. And yeah. like, you see all the guts, you see like the dude throwing up. You you are like you just see all these things, and you're just like, oh my god, I'm sure it smells horrible. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's it's like how do you con- yeah it's a, it's a great filmmaking like trial it's like how do you how do you convey something that cannot be conveyed like that you know you like up because for for me the way that I saw it was like okay what they're doing is they're just exponentially upping the sensory experience of everything else so that you can't yeah. help but like simulate what the scent is like right I yeah, found myself exactly. constantly I didn't even think about like imagining a scent until I kind of realized like. Dude, actually, I bet you feel the same way, too. I, I, like, it just kind of hit me, like, I I have an idea, like, I think about what all of those girls smelled like. Like, I have oh, an idea, yeah. I, like, I have already made up an idea of what all those girls smell like. Yeah. I have no idea what these girls smell like. Right. You know? Like, I think it's super interesting. Yeah, really, really well done. It's, it's a good, uh, it's a good di- directorial like decisions to do those things. I think it's really interesting to convey all that stuff in, in that way. And to use like, and to use color, like, man, when he, he gets like sick at one point and he just looks terrible. And I thought the same thing too. I was like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is all over. Yeah. I just feel like he is probably like gross and like unwashed and just smells bad. It's really, yeah, really interesting. It's everything is so gritty and grimy that you can't help but like, that to it's like feel yeah, that everything better, stinks. I'm glad he exists. Someone needs yeah. to make perfume because everything stinks <laughs> yeah. in this universe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then at some point he get, he gets later in the film he gets to like these like lavender fields and you're like wow that right must right. smell that so amazing lush, yeah yeah pretty much just about every shot that involved like landscape or like seeing that kind of like uh, Venice type town you know like mm-hmm. was blew me away. Like, yeah, I screenshotted that right away. Oh um, yeah, yeah, definitely. But to to get back to the main narrative, there's a mm-hmm. guy named John Baptiste. Like, he has a super hard life. He's born into essentially this long chain of uh, something like indentured servitude. It feels more like a concentration camp, to be honest. But this guy yeah. is doing like the most menial, like blue collar labor by super oppressive employers, for lack of mm-hmm. better words. And yeah. uh, you could say he was a slave from child from childhood until adulthood. And um, and then I really dive into like the socioeconomic like background of that as to why or what what country he comes from or whatever. But or, but um, they he he so he yeah he's very enthusiastic about sense. He's very captivated by sense and he's very sensitive to sense. And uh, he finally get he he has this opportunity to be transferred into essentially what they just call it like this main town area, but it's really sort of like a city mm-hmm. and. Um, it's there that he sort of discovers that there is this variety of sense. There's this world of sense that he's never smelled, and it what it it all starts out as this like innocent goal to smell everything that the world has to offer. Yeah, and he gets so taken away by everything there, and like that's such an opportunity. That was such an opportunity that they took to make these beautiful sweeping montages of everything that's going on in the city. Like you know, you're kind of like hustle and bustle, right? And um he's drawn to this uh i guess this vendor woman you know she's kind of selling these fruits i don't know what fruit it was and um yeah. um he's just drawn to her scent and he's kind of following her and uh in his infatuation to get near her and smell her he freaks her out um to the point where she starts screaming and an event to kind of keep her from drawing attention to him which could i guess inevitably lead to his death he covers her mouth, suffocates her, kills her, and 
somewhere wrapped up in like his harsh upbringing of constantly escaping death i think he just became very desensitized to how heavy that is Mm -hmm. and took advantage of that opportunity to very hyper sensually smell her (laughs) yeah like he wanted to like consume her i guess it's good like the when it was like happening i was like i was like if if this was like another sense like if he was if he was like tasting instead of he would be like trying to consume her and like he was trying to like consume her scent i guess i guess he just like realized that it was like fleeting and they can go away and and that that becomes like his motivation to try and like preserve sense yeah yeah um yeah and i wonder Um, too like you mentioned like him being kind of surrounded by death he he starts uh his life in in a very like uh death defying kind of way and like and then death kind of you're right death kind of surrounds him but he also like leaves this like trail of dead behind him as he like as he continues his life every person he encounters like meets an untimely end you know what i mean yeah like uh the 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 woman who runs the orphanage as soon as as he she sells him uh she's like murdered and then uh and then the guy after, the, yeah, the guy after him is is the like run over by a carriage and, <laughs> and drowned, drowned. And then even um um, Dustin Hoffman's character, like he just gets a uh, crushed by this earthquake, and then his final taker gets executed <laughs> at the end. For yes, his, oh my for the God. things yeah, that he did. Yeah, yeah everyone right. he's around dies. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah, it was it was really interesting, and his performance was so convincing. Dude, he was such How a good actor. How do you do that? I was I was like, I was watching. I was like, who is this guy? His, his name is Ben Wishaw, and he has such a like a interesting face. Like, yeah. So on the on the side, I do these like these uh, movie trivia things um, for Screen Crush, and w- I'm always fascinated by the casting um, possibilities. Like, you know, Han Solo could have been. Burt Reynolds or anything like that. And and more recently, whenever I do like a newer movie, I always discover, I always kind of put like, okay, well, this person, this role could have been played by X actor, Y actor, and Z actor. And then when I get like pictures of them, I start to realize that they all kind of like look the same, right? So whenever there's an actor that just has like a really striking face, I'm just like fascinated by him. And this guy, I was like, I know I've seen him before in something else. He plays Q in Skyfall and like the new Bond series. So... I was like, I know I've seen him before, but he is just, there's something about him, man. It's just this, like, he has this, like, inquisitive look, like, he's just, like, overanalyzing yeah. anything and everything that somebody says, and, like, right. everyone's actually. And he doesn't look immediately threatening. You know? No, no, he just, not at he all. Lo- he looks really meek, and like you said, yeah, inquisitive. Like. And even when he's, like, it, when he's, like, kind of, like, his most dastardly, um, like, the movie takes this, like, this, like, sharp, up curve and just he just becomes like a he becomes a serial killer right yeah the lighting no every yeah every time he is about to do something like blatantly wrong the lighting becomes incredibly dramatic and like half of his face or a quarter of his face is like obscured by shadow Mm -hmm. yeah and he just gets like and even that he doesn't look menacing even when he's like lurking he never looks menacing he just looks like analytical you know he's just like yeah i don't know (laughs) it's just it guy did such an amazing job yeah like, um, like when he like when he's in the alleyway and he's like uh he's going after his final woman you know yeah, like yeah he just looks incredibly calculated yeah you know exactly um well why don't we take a quick break and uh we will return to discuss more of perfume The Cinephilia Anonymous telecast is produced by Satchel Drakes and Nick Murphy. Music by Mark Yunker. You can hear more of his music at yunker.ca. That's J-U-N-K-E-R dot C-A. You can follow the telecast on Twitter at C-A Telecast. Subscribe on YouTube at C-A Telecast. Subscribe on iTunes. And check out our website, C-A Telecast dot com.